I'm very happy to be here today. I've never spoken to a big group like this since I was born. But, but So I'm very grateful for honoring me to speak in this IDEC conference. My name is Brother John Kennedy Oronjo, the founder of St. Charles Luanga Children's Center and secondary school called Shuleyet Nostra Escuela in Spanish. The center provides education, food, shelter, and medical care for 300 children. In my life, I've never thought of starting a school. I'd never thought of starting a school. But as a Catholic missionary who was not able to conform with some rules, I was sent to uh, Islam in Nairobi to keep the house for the brothers. Now, when I was there, every morning, children were coming to knock to ask for food. And when I gave one food, they were hiding to throw to other street children behind the fence. And when I looked at it every day, they were becoming many. So what I did was to welcome them and turn the brother's house into a school. And it brought about controversy that, you see, I was disobedient to the church. And then at some point, one of the brother's leaders say, he does not have money, he will close this thing tomorrow. But I want to assure you, today from now 60 children, it is housing 300 children getting food, shelter, and education. So, in Kenya, that topic of um, democratic education or inequality, it is not there. So I will speak about the experiences of my journey in the education or with the children we are educating. Only that I read somewhere that democratic education infuses the learning process with the fundamental values of our society founded on democratic and democratic values of meaningful participation personal in it, initiative, equality, and justice for all. Democratic education views young people not as passive recipients of knowledge, but as active co-creators of their own learning. They are not products of education system, but also valued participants in a vibrant learning community. Don't you think so? Every country in Africa has a unique history that shapes the nation's aims and aspirations, activities, and destiny that are reflected in the education system. Before the coming of the Europeans, African practiced indigenous education, where one was thought to be a functional member of the society through acquisition of values, knowledge, benef beliefs, and practices of the society. This system of education was a product of its own time. Upon the arrival of the missionaries, there was an establishment of first formal schools across Africa, which taught catechism, reading, and writing for the purpose of evangelism. Africans resisted this system as it disrupted their social, political, and economic life. The effort of missionaries was supported by the colonial administrators whose emphasis was on vocational and religious studies. During colonial time, Africans received education that prepared them for manual labor. This did not address their social and cultural goals, which made Africans to establish their independent schools. Upon independence, most African countries reviewed their systems of education in order to cope with the ever-changing social, political, and economic environment. Currently, the following challenges affect the education system in Africa. Lack of schooling facilities, unequal opportunity for education across the countries, low participation rate, low funding from the government, large class size, and above all, poverty. Economic poverty plays a key role when it comes to coping with the direct cost of education. Making it, making it impossible for individual children 
or individuals to access education. So the poor people are very vulnerable in this. Most of the African countries inherited the structure of their system of education from their colonial masters. Kenya, for example, has the following structure. Early childhood education, which is two to three years of age. Primary education, six to 14 years. Secondary education, 15 to 18 years of age of the children. Tertiary and middle colleges, is we are doing it two to three years. Early childhood education lays a foundation for development of a child, which is called ECD, largely provided by the pro private sectors, NGOs, and faith-based organizations. But the government designs the content to be taught, which is not always inspected. In primary, which is elementary, the environment has been high with low com completion rate due to, among other reasons, economic inequality. At the end of the primary education, there is a national examination administered for, Kenya, for the children. And if you don't pass it, that is the end of education. So that is what motivated me to start a school for the children who are sent out of school because they couldn't perform. They couldn't meet the marks. Those who managed to go to the secondary level, also subjected to the national examination, and again, few managed to proceed to the university, as placement is done by joint, ma joint mark. Majority who are from poor backgrounds are also failing because they cannot meet the cost. So they failed to proceed to the university. The system is so fixed that it doesn't give solutions to the children, alternative solution to the children it perceives to be academically poor. They are sent home because of not achieving the cut mark. They are now the dying children in the streets with nobody to identify themselves with. The children with no teachers, classrooms, food, clothes, no medical care, no books, are competing with the students with well-established schools with everything at their disposal in the same national examination, which also sets also a cut mark entry to the next level. At the end of the day, the results are only victims of circumstances. Actually, I've realized that in democratic education, where the St. Charles Luanga, because our children did not come from a set family. They were born and raised in the streets. They are orphans, so they did not get education from their parents. It is very difficult for them to conform to the system that this is what you have to follow, this is what you have to learn. So everyone is unique, and each one of us learns in a different way. By supporting the individual development of each young person within our caring community, democratic education helps young people learn about themselves, engage with the world around them, and become positive and contributing members of the society. In St. Charles Luanga, why I uh, I realized that this democratic education was, was through our friend, Yusto, who spoke here. When I met his friend, he introduced me to them, and I learned the values that sometimes we don't need books or whatever. What we need is love. And that is what St. Charles Luanga is trying to embrace and learning from our sister school, Nostra Escuela, that these values now we are trying to inculcate in our children are one of them is teachers, even though they are learning in the government system, teachers are creatively engaging students. We work within a more conventional school setting, but still provide students with a chance to have choice in their learning. These teachers go beyond the conventional curriculum to build a more relevant and engaging experience that connects to the lives of the young people. Small implementing schools implementing the democratic education on a day-to-day -day basis. We employ practices like self-directing learning, shared decision-making, individualized project-based work, and students chosen choosing internships in the community. They can go and clean up. They can do go and talk to the old elderly people and learn about the popular knowledge. This includes schools that use the label democratic school, which is not there. We are only trying 
to give ourselves the level, but it's not there. I don't know what will happen when we introduce it to the government. So, non-profit and after school, um, young people leading reform efforts in their schools and communities is very important. And today, what I wanted to really speak to you about is a reflection before, when I got a letter to come here, I interviewed our students about what is happening in the education system. And this is what I, I, I got. Imagine a class six, elementary six pupil who scored 208 marks, but unfortunately missed the pass mark set by the government to, of one, uh, to 250, and he misses that marks by 32. When it became clear that he had to repeat a class, if you don't meet the marks, you have to repeat a class, he could not live with it. He went home and hanged himself. He was not alone. Another girl scored 150 marks in Kenya Certificate of Primary Education. She hanged herself after she told her mother that she could not live with the results. She was made to believe that without academic success, she had no future and that Good life is only meant for those who meet the academic target. A list of these tragedies where lives and futures are being lost in the name of education is growing. Pupils, students commit suicide using ropes, poison and sharp objects. Parents take objects and clobbering teachers because they have not taught their children to pass examination is increasing. What do these events say of an education system that has brought the inequality in our school and also has become a death warrant, not only for our children, but also for the community? Allow me to elaborate a few reflections. Competitions. A mother reflects of the experience of a friend whose son got a B- minus in KCSE, that is Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education. He was keen in joining a parallel degree program as he had not made it to the public university. His mother, a single parent, insisted that she could, not own, she could not afford it. The boy could not understand why his mother could not sell the only piece of land they had so that he could go to school. He said, and I quote, I have no degree, I have nothing left. One day, as they were having an argument, he went out of his mind, hit his mother, with the armor and killed her. The neighbors also avenged the mother's death by killing the boy. Through the eyes of the mother, questions are raised about the lessons that are being passed on the children. Children who are taught about the call for their own good instead of using their gifts for the good of their community. They are taught to desire what they do not have instead of contentment with the gifts of being happy with what they have. They are taught to make rivals instead of friends, competitors instead of collaborators, and turn them into people who never think of we but me. It's also sad that the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much marks or much money, it's whether we provide enough for those who have little in our society. When children are made to compete in this unfair battle in the name of education, with their gifts, given capacities, are so diverse. The result is that they are no winner and no loser, only victims of circumstances. Schools as a market of students. A child is sent away from his school for performing poorly. His grandmother liking, links his situation to a hospital that sends away patients that are critically ill and keeps only those with minor illnesses. This is done to maintain high standards and achieve high average performance. At the end of the year, this hostel celebrates with pomps while outside the gate lies the corpse of those who were thrown out to die. The stench of the corpses is in their nostril as they sing and dance. In our schools, children who are weak academically, as they put it, who find it difficult to fit in, those who come from poor backgrounds and so on are the ones who are in the direct need of education. But they are the ones we send away to die in the villages and the stress 
as paupers, drug users, and criminals. Self-acceptance. The voice of his father telling his daughter of his life's journey and how he ended up in prison, he tells of his need to be the best and his efforts to remain at the top in class, which is how he ends up in the jail. One gets a feeling that his prison is comparable to the situation of his daughter, which his daughter has entered, one in which she will never experience the freedom of becoming her full self, but with all, will always live in the strangling limits of the expectations of the teachers and the society to maintain that top position. He has some words of advice for his daughter and says, don't worry about being the best, being the first. Just learn to live simply as yourself. If you learn to welcome yourself as you are with your strengths and weaknesses, no matter where you are in the ladder, in class, then you not only become happy, but you also be free. Again, he says, to be happy is better than to be fast. To have friends is better than to have rivals. To encourage the weak in your class is better than despise them. For true success is not conquest. It is triumph over others. True success is the joy which comes from knowing that you have done your best. Schooling versus education. The tendency of our schools in Kenya of learning to instill fear in students through force of you have to do maths, you have to do chemistry, you have to do what? And even if you pass and you miss a mark and you want to become a doctor, the government will give you computer science, which you are not passionate about. So it looks like a role that fears plays in propagating hatred and resentment and desires and revenge. It asks of the teachers to respect their students rather than instill fear in them because child who is intimidated by his teachers goes home full of contempt uh, and while a child who is respected goes home full of gratitude. One paper, they may be, not be the same, but in life, one is soaring above the other. Education is not about information, according to me, but rather about transformation, about bringing out the best in everyone and making him more human than generation before him. In conclusion, I want to quote, um, there is John Paul II say that a society that has no place for its weak members is not worth of its salt. The brilliant pupil can only be your pupil, but the weak one can be your teacher, teaching you to be patient, tolerance, and contentment. The shepherd who walks at the pace of the sheep, strong sheep, cannot be a good shepherd because he will lose the weak ones on the way. The good shepherd, uh, he will bring the whole flock home. I mean, the shepherd who walks at the pace of the strong sheep can be a good cannot be a good shepherd because he will lose the weak ones along the way. The good shepherd is the one who walks behind the flock at the pace of the weak, carrying the weakest in his arms. He will bring the whole flock home, teaching the brilliant pupil his profession. It only produces academic scholars, but teaching the weak ones, which we call weak ones, is much more, it is a vocation, it's a call. It pro its products are the great men and women who have influenced the history, but who are not so much brilliant as the, the academic puts it, the likes of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who never attended any school, but has been a great teacher and example in showing us how to love. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity. And maybe in two minutes, that is, can, can call a slide to see my school. I don't know how to use these things. <laughs> that is the school, and there are around 300 children. They are living there and they are studying there. And that's a little bit of the marks in Kenya and where it is in Nairobi. It's called St. Charles Luanga. St. Charles Luanga was the martyrs of Uganda, those who were killed because of what they believed in. And that is the school. That is the, some of the structures. Continue.
Those are some of the structures we have. That is our bathroom, and they are very happy to bathe there. Those are some of these children. Next. And that's where they sleep. And that's where they study. And most of them come from the slums. That's where I get them from. That boy is now in Form 3, in high school Form 3, he's in my school. Those are some of the boys. These girls, I, pre, I, I think they are sisters because they got lost when they were young and they were two, but they met the here. But they ever together like that, so maybe you never know. So that's what we cook. They study from there. Those are the people behind the success of St. Charles Luanga, Justo and Anairis, and Fred and Bay Foundation, and I think one of member of Fred and Bay is here. They're giving support to the schools, and I thank them for much. <laughs> Next. They learn music, you can come and volunteer and teach them something for those who are gifted. <laughs> Next. Let's go. And that is the boy you saw in the street. Now he's big and he's very talented. So thank you very much.